everyone. Uh, I hope uh, things are going well, and um, I am always interested in hearing from you through Piazza or just by email or over the uh, video conferencing uh, if you're having difficulty with any aspect of the course. Um, we're ready now to move on to section seven of chapter two, which is about quantifiers. And um, this can sometimes be a confusing part of the, of the course. And uh, I'm gonna say things a little bit differently than the way the book does. And maybe take a little bit more time than the book does. Uh, but I think uh, by reading the book, you'll get a valuable uh, complementary perspective. And so you should make sure, as always, that you are reading the textbook. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about quantifiers. And before we can really dive into quantifiers, we need to remember something from our discussion of sentences, which is um, we need to remember ab about the difference between a statement and an open sentence. So a statement is a sentence which is either true or false, like um, I own a dog, or which is either true or false, as it happens it's true, or I own a cat, which is either true or false and happens to be false. Or um, another example of a statement in a mathematical context might be that uh, 16 is an even number. But an open sentence is a sentence which has variables in it. And whether or not it's true or false depends on the values that you give the variables. So for instance, an example of an open sentence might be something very simple. X is bigger than five. You can't tell me whether that's true or false because you don't know what X is. If I tell you that X is three, then it's false. And if I tell you that X is seven, then it's true. So for some values of X, this statement is false. And for some values of X, this statement is true. And that's an open sentence. They can have more than one variable. I mean, for example, you could have x, y equals 1. And if x is a half and y is 2, this statement is true. But if x is a half and y is 5, the statement is false. Again, the truth or falsehood depends on the value that you assign to the variables. Now. A lot of the things that we think of as equations that come up in courses where the, you're asked to solve them, they're really open sentences. So here are two open sentences, 3x equals 7 or x squared plus 5x equals 0. Both of these are open sentences because their truth or falsehood really depends on what x is. And when you're asked to solve such an equation, what you're really being asked to do are to find values of x making the open sentence a true statement. And one thing to think about with these, uh, with even in these very simple cases, is that the question of whether you can solve them, whether there even is an x which makes them a true statement, depends a lot on what the legal values are for x, where x is allowed to take values. So for example, let's remember what the two equations are. One is 3x equals 7, and one is 5, uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So if I require x to be a natural number, then neither of these equations have a solution, because the first one, the solution to the first one, uh, would have to be 7 thirds, and that's not a natural number. So there's no natural number three times which gives seven. I mean, you can just test them. Three times one is three, three times two is six, and beyond that, they're all bigger than seven. And the second equation, well, if you factor this, you probably can see that the, the solutions are negative two and negative three, and so they're not natural numbers. So among the natural numbers, this can never be zero. If x is a natural number, this is always going to be a positive number. So 
neither of the equations have solutions if x is required to be a natural number. If x is allowed to be an integer, then the, first equa the second equation has two solutions because negative 2 and negative 3 are both integers. And so there are two solutions to that equation. But there are still no solutions to the first equation because there's no integer that, has, that fits the equation 3x equals 7. Because remember, integers are whole numbers or negative whole numbers or 0. But if you allow x to be a rational number or a fraction, then both equations have solutions. So whether or not these equations have solutions depends on where x is required to be. And that's what quantifiers are for. So quantifiers are a part of logical language along with the things like and and or and if and then. And what they do is they put a scope on the possible values of a variable in an open sentence. And by doing this, they convert the open sentence into a statement which could be true and false, true or false. And there's really two different things that you can do in this way. You can say that your open sentence is true for some x, So, or you can say your open sentence is true for all x. And this converts, so in other words, this makes a statement. Each of these is a statement now. Well, and I should be more a little bit more careful. For some x in a particular set A, or for all x in a particular set A, where A is a given set. And these are usually put under the heading of the for exists quantifier, or there exists quantifier, and the for all quantifier. So let's talk about there exists, which is the same as saying for some, or for at least one. So here's an example. There exists x in the rational numbers such that 3x equals 7. So when you put there exists in front of an open sentence, so here's the open sentence. You put there exists x in a set. Here my set A is Q. This becomes a statement which could be true or false, and it's true if when you look at the set of x in the rational numbers, which is your given set, such that 3x equals 7, if that set has at least one element, so it's not empty. If you can find one element, possibly more, but at least one, that satisfies the condition and lies in the set, then the, the statement with the existential quantifier becomes a true statement. So uh, here are the examples that are related to the equation I looked at before. If I say there exists an x in the rational number such that 3x equals 7, that's a statement, and it's true because there does, in fact, exist an x in the rational number such that 3x equals 7. But if I use the integers instead of the rational numbers, there exists x in the integers such that 3x equals 7. It's still a statement. It's a true or false statement, and it happens to be false. So you can use, although it can be confusing, but the symbol for there exists is a backwards e. So you read this this um, statement here as there exists an x such that p of x is true. And somewhere in there, you have to say where x lies. What, what is the, the universe where, where this x's are allowed to exist? So for example, uh, there exists x in x so that p of x could be written. I should have been more careful here. There exists x in x such that p of x is. And this will be true if there's at least one x in the set big X for which the statement P of X is true and false otherwise. So the open sentence, which had this variable, this free variable X becomes a statement because X now is required to land in a given set. And we're asking whether there's some X. The universal quantifier, which 
means for all works in a similar way, but instead of asking if there's at least one x that satisfies the condition, it asks, does every x satisfy the condition? So I've taken the statement x squared, the open sentence x squared bigger than zero, and I've used the for all quantifier to restrict x to the natural numbers, and I've made a set a statement out of the open sentence for all x and n x squared is bigger than zero this statement will be true if the set of x's for which in the natural numbers for which x squared is bigger than zero is the natural numbers itself every natural number has every natural number x has x squared is bigger than zero On the other hand, if I, instead of using the natural numbers, I use the integers and I said for all x in the integers, x squared is bigger than zero. Again, that's a statement. It's asking whether if I run through all integers and I ask is x squared always bigger than zero, it, didn't, it should be an x, there should be an exponent here. It should say x squared. That's false because it's not true that every integer has a square bigger than zero because zero is an integer and zero squared is equal to zero. It's not bigger than zero. So once again, my open sentence got converted to a statement by adding for all x and z to the front of it, but it happened to be a false statement. The symbol for for all is an upside down a. So if I wanted to write this in symbols, for all x and z, x squared is bigger than zero. This is a false statement. But it is a statement nonetheless. So for all means if you were to run through all of the elements of x and see if p of x is true, it always is. Here's a couple more examples of the two things. Um, so the first one says there exists an x in the real numbers such that x squared equals 15. So the open sentence is x squared equals 15. The quantifier says we want to look at x in the real numbers and ask, is there an x in the real numbers such that x squared equals 15? This is a true statement. There happen to be two x's, but it's enough to find just one for the statement to be true. The second one says, if you restrict, if you take the open sentences, absolute value of the sine of y is less than or equal to one. Now you might say, well, that's always true. But in fact, um, if y were a complex number, that wouldn't be the case necessarily. So, um, but I, I put a quantifier in front of this and I say for all y in the real numbers, so absolute value of sine of y is less than or equal to one. And that becomes a statement because now we know that y is going to range over this entire set of real numbers. And we do know that the sine of y is of absolute value less than or equal to one. So this is also a true statement. And finally, this one's a little bit different in flavor. There exists a subset x in n, which has five elements. So here what we're saying is, so x is a subset of the natural numbers. So what's the set that underlies all of this? Well, it's the power set of the natural numbers. Remember, that's the set of all subsets of the natural numbers. And we're saying that there exists an x in the power set of the natural numbers such that x has five elements. And this is a true statement. And to show that it's true, we just have to produce one example. So how about the example? I mean, there are many examples. There are infinitely many examples. But this one is an example. And an, a there exists statement will be true if there's at least one example and possibly more. So just to sort of emphasize some of the, uh, the ways this works, what happens when you try to when, when you turn, you negate a statement with a quantifier. So let's look at the, 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 um, the statement, there exists x in x such that the open sentence p of x holds. 
So this is a statement and it's asking, does the set X contain a little x for which P of X is true? Well, suppose that's false. If it's false, it means there isn't an X in X such that P of X is true. So if there's no X in P of X with P of X true, that's the same thing as saying all X in P of X have P of X false. In other words, all X in P of X have not P of X true. So when you negate the statement, there exists X and X such that P of X, what you get is a for all statement for all X and X, not P of X. So negation, if you wanted to think of it in a fancy way, you'd be saying the negation of there exists X such that P of X is true, the negation is for all X, not P of X is true. So just to give a concrete example, uh, if you take the statement, there exists an X in the real number such that X squared is less than zero, that's a false statement. And it's false because for all X in the real numbers, x squared is bigger than or equal to zero is true. So by ruling out the existence of an x with x squared less than zero, you are saying that x squared is bigger than or equal to zero for all x. What about the other way around? Well, if you have a statement that says for all x, p of x, if that's false, that means it's not the case that p of x is true for all x. So it must fail. Now it only has to fail once. It could fail more often than that. But then, so the, the negation is gonna, the way you see it is that there is an X for which P of X is false. So all X um, have P of X true, that's false means some x has p of x false, which means that some x has not p of x true. And if you like these fancy symbols, you could say that not for all x p of x, the negation of that is there exists an x for which not p of x is true. And the example that I'm giving here is if we say, take the statement for all X in the natural numbers, X squared is bigger than zero. Its negation would be there exists a natural number whose square is less than or equal to zero, and that's false. So these two statements are the negations of each other. Maybe one other way to think about the diff, the existence and the um, universal quantifiers is that existence is like an or statement. So if you have a set X and you have an open sentence P of X. So for example, let's say our sentence is, um, is uh, 2X equals 6 and um, our set X is the natural numbers. And we want to know if we want to look at there exists X in the natural numbers so that 2X equals 6. In some ways, this is like taking an OR statement for each X. So you would be saying 2 times 1 equals 6, or 2 times 2 equals 6, or 2 times 3 equals 6, or and you'd have infinitely many OR statements. And this infinite combination of OR statements is going to be true if, it, if even one of them is true, which of course it is. One of them is true. So in this way, there exists is like a generalization of OR. It's an, it allows you to take 
the statement p of x for every element of x, which could be an infinite set, and or them all together. And the result is true if any one of those statements is true. And similarly, um, for all is a bit like and. And. So if I say that for all x in the natural numbers, x squared is bigger than 0, you could think of this as looking at all of the statements 1 squared is bigger than 0, 2 squared is bigger than 0, 3 squared is bigger than 0, and so on, and connecting them by AND. So they would all have to be true, all infinitely many of them, for this statement to be true. 